Just getting to see Obi Wan and Anakin, you know, back in the good old days, uh, it was it was like the closest I'll ever get to time travel. One of the big things we wanted to do with the series was that for Vader, this is personal. You can't escape him! What have you become? Hello there, and welcome to a very special edition of the Movie Podcast. My name is Daniel, and today I am being joined by my fellow Jedi Knights. Well, maybe Jedi Knight and then Sith Lord, uh, yeah, Shabazz and Anthony. How you doing, Jay? Sense. You know, yeah. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, my question really here is, did I survive Order 66 or did I not make it? Uh, you did not make it. No, yeah, you're a force ghost right now. Talking. To did me. Anthony kill me? Is that what happened? No, that I, would, exactly I wouldn't kill my happened. friends. Keep them close. Oh. There you go. <laughs> keep your <laughs> you, friends close. You keep the the Jedi close to you, and I like would keep you sin. guys close, and then Them. the rest. And, you know. Anthony would be an Inquisitor for sure. He would. I he would definitely be an Inquisitor. He'd be inquisitor. like a former Jedi turned to Inquisitor. Anthony, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm going to talk about the weather. It's extremely hot where I am in Toronto, it is extremely and hot. Um, yes, it's uh, the weather's nice. For some reason. What's it, great about talking about the weather is that we actually got to talk about the weather with exactly. our special guests on the show today. It was a great mm -hmm. segue. Thank you for that. Today on the movie podcast, we are delighted to welcome director Deborah Chow and actor Hayden Christensen of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. You may also know Hayden Christensen from other films like Attack of the Clones. And Revenge of the Sith. And oh, Jumper. Playing... Jumper's a classic. Jumper? No, but I was Jumper? just going with the Star Wars. Jumper. No, I was giving Little you a jumping Italy. off point. You know? There you go. Little Italy. No, but I was just Good going, movie. like, I was saying, I was saying more, like, as his roles as Anakin Skywalker in <laughs> Attack of the Clones <laughs> and Revenge of the Sith. And then, of course, Deborah Chow, who we absolutely adore uh, her episodes of The Mandalorian. And then when it was announced that she was going to be getting an obi-wan kenobi series we were first like we're oh my god we're getting an obi-wan kenobi series and then it's going to be directed by deborah chow who directed our favorite episodes of mando um really amazing and we're coming off an incredible couple weeks here on the movie podcast and we are so humbled and lucky and grateful for the opportunities that we've been getting uh earlier this week we had a mon Vellani, another markham native this is a markham podcast now so we had a mon Vellani, and now we have hayden christensen joining us the very same week pretty cool how are you guys cool. feeling about this? Anthony, I'm going to get you to start us off. You're the one. You and Shay got to talk to Hayden, which we're going to kick that interview very soon. But what was it like for you getting to talk to Hayden? Uh, it was pretty quick, and I was a little nervous. And, uh, yeah, it was. It, it just came and went. And it, it almost like felt like I didn't even interview him. Yeah. You know, like it was just something that just he was there on screen. I wasn't even looking at him. And oh. I was just looking at... <laughs> I, truthfully, you're concentrating you, you, on what you're. I was looking at the question, <laughs> and then the questions get all you know. When I'm when when I have to read something, things get all messy. But uh, no, <laughs> truthfully, like you're you're looking at the screen, you don't really realize that you're talking to Hayden. And you're talking yeah. to the guy who's playing Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, who you yeah. kind of grew up with uh, throughout those that prequel trilogy, and it's a little bit of surreal. So yeah, it's it was it's it's amazing. That's all I can say. It's really really That's amazing. amazing. Shabazz, how are you feeling right now? You know, if I was, uh, if I could talk to my 13 or 14 year old self while he was watching uh, Revenge of the Sith, I would be like, wow, like, hey man, one day you're going to get to talk to Anakin. I wouldn't believe it. Like, this is, this is one of those moments again where it's, we're getting people on the show. We're super grateful for it. But these are all people that have shaped the way we watch movies and how we watch movies. Um, so to, to get the opportunity to just kind of share our love with them is is unreal and i and it, it never it never you know it's never i never phased by it like it's always just the moment where i'm like wow thank you to, to spend their time and usually we only get a few minutes with them but it just felt like hayden could have spent hours with us it's it's and, and deborah too you know we yeah. get we are so lucky to be able to do what we're doing right now and to talk to the amazing humans behind these shows and these movies that we love um Everyone listening to this episode right now, thank you for your support. We're able to do this because of you and because of your support and because you listen and because you engage with all of our content and our socials and everything. Uh, that's a huge deal for us. And that, that means the world to us. That allows us to keep going and keep doing what we're doing. So thank you. If you're finding this episode, if this is the very first episode of the movie podcast you've ever heard, hello, 
Welcome to the show. Uh, you can catch a brand new episode of our show every single Monday and watch out throughout the week for our review episodes, our interviews, just like the one you're about to listen to, and all of our other episodes that we drop throughout the week. There are lots of them. We're doing a lot of episodes. It's been a very busy couple of weeks here on the show, but we love what we're doing. Uh, and make sure you follow us on our socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterboxd at The Movie Podcast. It's very easy to remember. All of the links to everything you want to know are in the show notes below. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. Please make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, like this video, do all the other fun YouTube stuff because this is what we want to do. And by you watching this right now, by you listening to this right now, you're helping us do that. So thank you. We have a lot of Obi-Wan Kenobi content planned throughout the week. We will be attending the red carpet today. Uh, so it could have happened already. It may not have happened already. So depending on the timing of when this episode releases. Uh, so we'll get to actually talk to Hayden and Deborah once again but in person so look forward to all of that we're going to be covering everything on our socials so make sure you check that out that's exclusive to our social media channels so instagram twitter all of that you won't want to miss it also check out our interview with amon Vellani, another uh, markham native that we got to talk to so please check that out and without further ado let's jump right in and talk to deborah chow of obi-wan kenobi hi deborah i'm daniel hi nice hi. to meet you and I'm Shabazz. Nice to meet you, too. Thank Hi. you so much for sharing your time with us today. How, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's nice to be home. Oh, definitely. It's nice. It's great to have you here. And uh, we were just literally just talking that from that very first episode you worked on The Mandalorian, we'd hope that we'd see more of you in Star Wars universe. So it's amazing to be talking to you right now and especially about Obi-Wan of, of all characters as well, too. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Um, the series deals with a lot of loss, and we had that incredible moment in episode three where Vader just wants to see Obi-Wan burn and atone for what he's done to him. How did you even begin to plan that first confrontation between Vader and Obi-Wan in 10 years? Um, you know, it's we went through quite a lot of development, and obviously, you know, you know, put a lot of thought into how these two come back together because, you know, we're obviously between two trilogies with everything. Um, and I think, you know, one of the big things we wanted to do with the series was that for Vader, this is personal, you know, he, this is very personal to him. And, and in some of the iterations when we've seen him doing business as usual in, or business in, in other films, this is different because, you know, you're feeling the stronger drive of Anakin within the character. Um, oh. So, you know, it just sort of evolved really that, you know, we knew at this point in episode three that obviously Ben is still trying to find his footing and he's still, you know, trying to come back up. And Vader's just incredibly powerful. So we knew the dynamic needed to be like that in the middle of the series. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Now, the Mandalorian series, it, it felt very inspired by Westerns. What was the inspiration behind the Obi-Wan series? Um, for me, I think, you know, obviously Star Wars, so much of the, so many of the roots are, lo are in samurai films or in Westerns. Um, so it always feels like a good reference to go back when you're looking at things. I think if anything... Um, with this one, I was looking more at references that are that were a little bit more character-based or a little bit more atmospheric, like Assassination of Jesse Jones or the, the Proposition, as opposed to sort of the more classic Westerns. And then, you know, a lot of samurai films for it. Definitely. That's awesome. Um, going back to that first season of The Mandalorian uh, and shooting in the volume to working on Obi-Wan now, you know, what were the biggest changes for you in working with that, tech, that technology, sorry, and just creating these shows because we've had a few of them now within the star wars world so how how have they evolved over the last few years of you working on them um you know the technology is definitely it keeps evolving you know every every year it's getting stronger you can do a lot more things so it was interesting when we first did mandalorian you know it was sort of the advent of that technology so there was you know we were kind of finding our way as we were doing it and when i came in to do obi-wan it was so much had already progressed, so there's so many things I could do actually with Obi Wan that I couldn't do. We couldn't do on Mandalorian, so that was really interesting. Um, oh. And then I think it was also interesting to be developing the material, knowing that you're shooting in stagecraft, because then you know specifically, like say the underwater basin four, you you know you know how you're doing it already and how how you're building a set for it. Definitely. And I mean, coming back to the series, and we're we're getting Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen coming back together after all this time. What was it like for you just, you know, wrapping your head around getting these two characters or these two actors back on screen together? Especially after last week, seeing that flashback sequence was amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty special, you know, because they obviously have a personal relationship as well. And you feel it, you know, like when we did say that flashback, you know, there's such a warmth and there's a bond between them as, as people. Uh, and, you know, I think 
pretty much every single person in the office ran down the, the day we were shooting that. So we had like everybody, we're like, where, you know, where all these people come from? Everybody wanted to see it because it means, like it meant so much to the crew too. Like they were fans and they cared. And then just to see this, it was, you know, I don't think any of us ever thought we'd see it again. So it was really special. Yeah, and, and just seeing, you know, that era of Hayden and Ewan together, that's, that was just magical seeing that. Yeah. Now, Ewan's expressed, you know, wanting to come back and hopefully do another season or something like this. W what about you? Where do you see the story kind of going forward? Um, you know, for this one, I mean, obviously, we really did design it to be one ser one series, so it really was meant to be a limited series. Um, so, you know, we, you know, and obviously I've been so consumed with this that I haven't kind of gone past this in yeah. any way. I'm still trying to get, get to the end with it. Uh, you know, there's still 10 years, obviously, in the timeline. So it's there's not to say there's not other stories that could be told. Um, but I think if, you know, I think if there was to be any more of it, you'd, you'd really have to have a story to tell. Definitely. Deborah, I just want to say thank you on behalf of both of us. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the show uh, and what you've done with, within the Star Wars uh, universe. We can't wait to see what you work on next. And we can't wait to see how the show ends tomorrow. Yes. So we're, we're counting down the seconds now. So thank you so much again for your time. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. All right, take thank care. you. And welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> and now please welcome Hayden Christensen. Hi, Hayden. My name is Shabazz. And I'm Anthony. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us in the movie podcast today. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Thank you. Awesome. That's How are amazing. you guys? Doing great. You know, it's it's a nice day in Toronto today, as you know. And Beautiful. Super hot. Going, so Super hot. Good. I know. I know. I just got back into town last night. So, so nice well, to be, be back, back home, home again. Hayden, we're such big fans of yours and the prequel trilogy. What were your first thoughts after getting the call to return in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series? Oh, I was, I was beyond thrilled. Um, you know, it was, it was uh, just a great phone call to get, you know, um, an incredible opportunity to come back to this franchise and, and do more with this character. Uh, so yeah, I was, I was so excited. In the prequel trilogy, you were able to establish who Anakin was as a person. What was it like returning to that character, transforming your body to play a younger and more rage-filled Vader? Yeah, the, the, the experience was amazing. I mean, um, you know, just getting to, to sort of, uh, explore the Darth Vader character a bit more, um, you know, was, was an incredible thing. I, uh... I got to you know do a lot with the Anakin Skywalker character in the prequels, um, but now getting to, to come back and and just sort of get back into that mindset, but now with the the physicality of Vader and and of course the appearance, um, it just sort of furthers the whole character, um, and and it's been a great opportunity. Since Revenge of the Sith, there have been different portrayals of Anakin across comics and Clone Wars and Rebels. What did you learn about Anakin that you wanted to bring into Obi Wan? Ooh, um, I I don't know. It's a good question. I I did as much sort of research as I could in in getting ready for this, and I went back and and watched all, all of the animated series, the the Clone Wars and Rebels, um, and they did a lot with 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 this character. Um, so it was it was just really interesting to see these these other storylines. Um, that they explored and and to see Anakin at, at that time in his life, you know, it, w it was all sort of a as I would have imagined, but just really um, helpful to get to get to see it, you know. Yeah, that, it's very true. Now, how, how did you like plan that first confrontation between yourself and Obi Wan? Um, well, I, I can't I can't take credit for for that. You know, that's all in the writing. Um, and when I when I first got these scripts, I was very taken with with. Uh, you know, obviously the story, but just what they were doing with these characters. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, what an incredible experience being on set with Ewan and, and uh, getting to, to, to have that confrontation. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, just just incredible. Uh, and hopefully that, that, that comes across, you know, on, on screen too. Yeah, especially during that flashback sequence that we got in the last episode, you know, what was it like kind of getting back together with you and, and just having that brotherly love that you guys had in the prequels? Yes, I mean, it was a surreal experience doing doing that scene, you know, uh, just being back in those costumes again and um, 
and, and just getting to see Obi Wan and Anakin, you know, back in the good old days, uh, it was it was like the closest I'll ever get to time travel, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, both you and I were, were just, you know, always kind of looking at each other, being like, how how cool is this that we get to be here, you know, um, doing this together? It was it was a very special thing. Yeah, you got to have those braids put back in. That was pretty cool. That <laughs> I had my cool. little Padawan braid, yeah, and and he had his his Jedi mullet. Yeah, uh, he did. Yeah. yeah. Did the the fighting come natural again when you started that that little sequence with uh, Ewan? Yeah, it it all came back pretty quick. Um, you know, they 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 do a lot of preparation for these uh, for for these stories and. Um, the lightsaber training is is pretty intensive, so uh, they make sure that that you're ready for it when when uh, when it's time to film that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you and I, I think, uh, had had a little rust to shake off, but but it came back pretty easy. That's wicked. Now again, welcome welcome back to the city of Toronto. You know, I have to know what is your go-to food spot when you're in the city. Ooh, you know. I don't know that I have one go-to food spot. Um, there's there's so much great food in this city, you know. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't really have one go-to. Do you ever hit up Tidney's as soon as you're back? Oh, that that's my go-to. That's yeah, that's true. Yeah, Tim Hortons is my first stop. Get get my my coffee, my my uh, my coffee and my my Timbits. Um, nice. Yeah, that's a that's a that's my like daily ritual when I'm in Canada. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, thank you again so much, Hayden, for your time today. We're so happy to have you back in the Star Wars universe, and we can't wait to see where you pop up next. Oh, have thank you. Appreciate thank you, that. Hayden. All right, nice talking with you guys. Take, Take care. care. All right, Bye. you too. Welcome back, everybody. That was pretty cool. And I mean, I don't know what else I could say at this point. That was really, really cool. Anthony, I'm going to get you to start us off. How are you feeling now post-interview with Hayden? Um, my hands are less clammy because yep. I usually get less clammy, shaky. less shaky. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a great interview. I think uh, I really didn't talk about Deborah as much, but De Deborah, I was there when you guys interviewed Deborah, and she was so poised and so collective. And like, I'm so happy that she w took charge of the Obi Wan series and really making it her own, uh, her own series, and not like mimicking other other films and like really the, when we when you asked her about the inspiration she she really said yes it's it's samurai and it's it's western but it's also my own and i think that's what yeah. really says a lot about her as her as a director because sometimes you know you got to create your own stuff and bring right. it to the table and she definitely did that i think when we when we saw episode three and that that whole sequence with uh darth vader and and Obi Wan, like that's something that you have never seen in a Star Wars film. Is just that no. tension between the two, is a dramatic experience that you don't really see in a Star Wars movie. It's right. or a series. It's that such a dramatic realness and rawness that she was able to bring to this table. So I, right. I wanted like applaud her and Hayden. You made you know my dream come true. I, again, I never expected to talk to you and. Here you are, and I'll probably see you at the red carpet again. So maybe we can chit chat if you're watching this. Yeah, we'll get a bite to eat. Who knows? Who knows where the yeah. night will go? Uh, but yeah, just to talk about Deborah Chow. I mean, what a talent! What an incredible, incredible talent to be at Lucasfilm with Star Wars, working in that universe. Would love to see her do another series or do a movie, whatever, wherever they want to go. I think Deborah Chow is the one that you want to have lead you. And we're having such incredible voices, you know, who were so inspired by these movies and shows growing up. And we're seeing them now in like in the roles that we want, like in, to shepherd these series forward. And I think of like John Favreau and I think of Dave Filoni and I think D Deborah Chow is part of that trio of people pushing star Wars forward. And I really hope other series and shows and, you know, IPs look to people like that to elevate and push the shows and movies that they're making forward. Shay, how are you feeling right now? Well, I just, I'm, I'm kind of sitting here and not sitting, I'm standing actually. And I'm wondering <laughs> why hasn't Tim Hortons partnered with Hayden Christensen yet to release some sort of a specific drink? You know, I mean, they've already done it with Justin Bieber and that's great, but clearly right. Hayden loves to go to the Timmy's as, as we discussed. So we did. When is that cr combination? When is that cross promotion going to happen is what I'm wondering. 
what would they call his? Like, because we have what is it? Uh, the Tim dark, Beebs? the dark side. Like, you know, like, like, like maybe something uh, like a dark like side t- coffee. Yeah, like instead of the dark roast, we'll have the dark side coffee. That's it. You don't got to change you know? much. Just a couple of branding. That's it. Yeah. Get a get a Haiti Timby. Uh, I don't know about that. No, I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> You're not on the marketing team for Tim Hortons for a reason, I guess. <laughs> I thought it was good. I thought it was good. It was. Well, we're gonna workshop it. We're gonna workshop it after Haiti this. Timbit. Hey, hey, it sounds like it's just from Haiti now. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's not it's, from Hayden. <laughs> He's from Markham. Okay. Yeah. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> As always, you can catch a brand new episode of the movie podcast every single Monday. Next week, we'll be talking all about the Obi Wan Kenobi finale. We may have some more special guests. Who knows? You're gonna have to tune in. Make sure you follow us at the movie podcast on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterbox and on YouTube. And please, if you're watching the video right now, you'll see the three of us are all wearing our lovely, lovely movie podcast merch t-shirt. So please, if you want to support the show, if you want to help us keep the lights and the mics on, that is the best way to do it. Please support. Thank you once again to our friends at Disney Studios Canada for making today's interview happen. Uh, We love working with them and we'll hopefully have a lot more to share with you very, very soon. Thank you to Deborah. Thank you to Hayden. We'll hopefully we'll be able to have you back on the show very soon. That was this time with the movie podcast, and we'll see you next.